Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. It's a special day for the Reality <laughs> Revolution. I have an angel, Leanne Rhymes. Uh, thank thank you. you so much. If you, <laughs> you, you probably know Leanne Rhymes. She doesn't require an introduction. She sold like 40, al 40 million albums. She's been around since she's been singing national anthems since she was five. I, 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 we've all grown up and, and known Leanne through so many different things. And what is wonderful, I got a recent chance, Leanne interviewed me for her podcast. And so uh, as I was going through this interview, I realized, oh my gosh, I need to talk to Leanne. She has <laughs> amazing knowledge and has learned so much. And, and the more I started thinking about it, uh, Leanne's life has been very unique and she's had some experiences no one else has had. And she can teach us a lot through her own experiences about how, how to go through life and about spirituality. And so I was excited and she actually said, yes, yeah, she'd come on and talk to me. So <laughs> welcome to the Reality it. Revolution, Leanne. Thank you. It's funny that you say I require no, um, no introduction because I almost sometimes I almost don't want one you know it's like I want people to meet me on the where I'm at now because right. the, people have this you know when you say my name I feel like people sometimes remember me from specific time stamps of like oh, either I'm 13 or they still think I'm 13 and I'm almost 40 like so it's so interesting when you said that that was the first thing that came up for me it's like oh I kind of like the that people can just meet me now. I'm just Leanne. <laughs> exactly. That not, I, I can, most of us can't relate to this, but anybody that sort of meets you it, it, right now, they, they have these this whole filter of, of experience. They've seen you in this movie. They've heard this song. And, and it's like they immediately have this idea of who you are yeah. without ever actually having met you. And, and, and for, that's got to be <laughs> somewhat frustrating. I'm sure you're used yes. to it by now. But how does that how does that affect you, you know? I mean, I guess you don't really get used to that. I, 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 there is a level of being quote unquote used to it, but at the same time, um, it can be incredibly frustrating um, because you do evolve so much. And when you're in the public eye, you know, I feel like as any career, there's these, you know, there's these massive success and then there's these kind of ebbs and flows. And sometimes I'm more, more in the public eye than I am at other times in my life. And, um, you know, like I said, people give these like real time stamps of you and they don't know you. And sometimes the, sometimes the thoughts they have in their head about you are like completely not, right. has nothing to, you know, to do with you at all. Um, they just have this judgment from their own right. filter about you. Um, so yeah, it is, it can be infuriating, <laughs> but yeah. I've also learned, I've also learned that it's how they view me is about them. I mean, that was, yeah. I, I think, you know, being in the public eye for over, I guess it's been 26 years, basically I've had, um, I did have a real aha moment one day where I was well, on social media where I was like, Oh, it's not how they're viewing me has nothing to do with me. Yeah. And it changed my whole the way that I was able to interact with you know, being quote unquote Leanne Rhymes in the public eye, and then right. also just being me and Leanne. I mean, thank God that pe um, people didn't see me when I was six years old, or th thank <laughs> God. I mean, I couldn't imagine it would be like crazy. It is trippy. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and leading up to what you said, um, at starting at such a young age, your whole life is sort of revolved around what other people think of you all the time. Mm -hmm. It's constantly, what does she think of this song? What do you think of this acting role? It constantly, and I, I'm, I, it's so ironic because today's episode, I'm talking about how we need to stop worrying about what other people think. And oh. you know, it's, it's really something that you have profoundly learned because I, mm -hmm. you know, so, so many people struggle with that. They'll hear the slightest criticism. They'll see it on, on you know, in social media or something and it just destroys them right and i mm -hmm. i couldn't imagine being in the public eye and millions of people are constantly judging you so you mm -hmm. have to have come up with some way of dealing with this people are constantly telling you or criticizing you or judging you how do you deal with that oh um hmm. i was gonna say a thick skin there is a piece of it that, that is you know you have to kind of let it roll off of you but i'm so sensitive um i'm yeah. such a sensitive human being um that i 
can't always let it roll off my back. What I what I started to notice were the things that really bothered me. Um, they were about what I had yet to heal within me or my judgments about myself. It was like if someone had pointed something out that that bothered me, I, there was some sort of truth that I believed inside that allowed that to bother me. And so I started to look at, okay, well, if these things are bothering me, where do I need to continue my own healing? Um, or where do I need to give myself more compassion or more love um, or see my own beauty? Um, that's where I, one of the things I really started noticing once I started shifting that for myself, it, things didn't bother me as much anymore. Um, and like I said, the perspective of understanding that it's a lot about, you know, people, especially with art, people mm -hmm. project onto art their own experience, which is beautiful because somebody the other day, I have a new album coming out called God's Work and they, somebody said it was a, a Christian record and I go, sure, sure it is. If you want it to be that, sure. If right. that's what you get from it, absolutely. And other people might not see it that way. And so it's, it's really, I, with this record in particular, like I've really started to notice the projection onto art. And so, which for me as the artist makes me really take things a lot less personal. Yeah. Um, and then I've had to learn like, you know, I've had to learn how to define my own level of success, um, you know, with the ebb and flows of, of life and career. I think, um, you know, sometimes there's massive commercial success, sometimes my own just being able to create the, the thing that I've created um, and it be birthed into this world through me is enough in itself. Like, so there's just, there's levels to, I think my own, my own understanding of myself that allow for um, a, a healthier connection or yeah. um, sometimes detachment from other people's opinions. So I was thinking about this, it, it kind of, and maybe I'm wrong, but I got this impression. I was kind of looking over your career and it, it, it's almost like your throat chakra was opened at like six years old. You had the power of like, for most people, their throat chakra maybe opens when, you know, when, when they're later and they get their confidence, but yours, it was just like this voice came out and boom, you had the world at your fingertips. And it was before anything else had gone, you know, you, before your heart had opened before anything else. And it's like this amazing power with your voice. Does that sound right? Like so, there, there, you found this power with your voice before you were ready almost, right? Oh, for sure. There was, <clears throat> and it's interesting because I feel like there's a piece of my throat chakra that's still not open, which is right. really interesting. Um, there's, I had this voice that could carry so much power when I sang. Um, and my own journey has been now of finding that same power within all different facets of my voice. Mm -hmm. Um, meaning, you know, when I speak, when I, when I need to set a boundary with, with someone, like all of those ways in which I utilize my voice, that's not singing, um, it, that has been my journey. And so I, there was like a facet of my voice. that was like, Whoa, like so open yeah. and you're right. My heart, I think my heart's always been really, really open. And I think it, there was a time when it definitely because of being in the public eye, um, and because of, you know, just life um it started it shut down um there was such a protective barrier around mm -hmm. that and i you know my journey over the past several years has been re um i guess it would it, it's re-exposing um in a, in a way that feels safe for me um mm -hmm. and connecting connecting all these facets of my voice with my heart um with the foundation that i now support you know for myself um as my own internal parent and, and guide, um, you know, so I, I think now in my life, my journey has been like connecting all of those up so that they, what I put out in the world, the expression that comes out um, feels really uh, grounded yet otherworldly and connected to, to love. Right. Honestly. I, yeah. I get that. Um so when just going back, it, it for most of us, we go through our childhood, it's kind of private. We we deal with these struggles, these things happen to us. You had uh so much success early on. Um, it, it's almost like you didn't get a childhood. And mm -hmm. so there has to be this like the this this part of you that 
just craves to go back and just just have that fun childlike part of you that was taken away. I'm sure you've had to deal with that. And I'm sure mm -hmm. there's some people out there that for other reasons have lost that opportunity for childhood. Maybe you can help them by explaining, you know, what, what do you do if, if you, if you kind of lose your childhood at an early age, you don't get that chance to play and, and have fun and be free. Um, I love, I love that you're asking me this um, because I, I'm still figuring it out. Um, yeah. It's actually something that is really, I've been percolating on um, in just the last 24 hours, um, the word play and, um, how sometimes, you know, I definitely didn't get a childhood. And I, I think because mm -hmm. of many reasons, there's a lot of people out there who can relate to that. And um, number one, I, I do think we have the opportunity to, to give ourselves that. I think as adults, um, I, I wrote a song on the new album called Innocent. And uh, it came about on this moment in time where I was, I, I felt like I, you know, we, and we hear it a lot, like we've lost our innocence. And mm -hmm. um, I was doing a lot of somatic work at the time, working with, with my body, which I kind of ejected from a long time ago to, as a defense mechanism um, and trying to really come back into my body. And I had this experience where I, I had, I felt my innocence like on the outside of me and it dropped, like all of a sudden dropped into my body in this somatic experience and I just started laughing and it was so it's so expansive and to me innocence love God like it's all the same thing my soul like and I had this real expansive expansive experience of my soul and um I wanted people to when I wrote that song it was I wanted people to ex remember that we haven't lost that there's nothing lost about our innocence we it's it may be pushed to the side or on the outside of us or something we feel like we can't touch into but it's it's still always there and nothing mm -hmm. is lost about it so that was my experience my first experience of trying to really tap back into that innocence and um and of course through music I got to express that and then now for with play it's sometimes I feel like play there's so much expectation on the word play for myself that Sometimes I'm I'm trying to play play around actually with renaming like what that is for me because play can sometimes seem like it's so far out there that getting from point A to point B can feel like there's this massive gaping hole. So I've just started to play around with bringing play um, or uh, the um, to become I guess the be the being feeling of a everything in my life being a little more playful like how can I bring yeah. a playful attitude even to something that's um that's serious can I can it be a little less heavy yeah. um and so I I've started as I've been kind of feeling into this I realized that play is for me it's a state it is a state of being it is a it's a mindset um mm -hmm. and it's not one that I'm very familiar with <laughs> um because I I feel like I had to, I did, you know, I had to work so much. There was always this attitude of work as, as a child. So it, it is a, it is something that I'm starting to feel into and want to bring more of in my life. Yeah. Um, because there, there is that, that innocence, that, that, um, that expansiveness that is, that is who we are. That's just waiting for us to really call it home. Having, having written so many um, songs and albums, I've got to talk to you about creativity in general, because mm -hmm. it's uh, the part of, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll paint and I have fun creating, but there's not that part of me that says, I got to do this. This is my living. And, and you know <laughs> what I mean? Um, you have learned a process, obviously, at some point of how to create. I, I think it's one of the most important skills. There's, there's a lot to it. So, uh, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that. Do you have to put yourself in a space? Are you constantly creating when you make a song? Does it pop up in your mind? How does it work for you to enter into that creative state? Oh, I don't think I'm ever out of it. I yeah. don't, I, I am. I mean, I, I truly believe like, I mean, we are, look, we're all creation. Like it, I don't, there's some of us that, I guess for me, it, it's listening. Um, I'm a really good listener when it comes to the universe and me like mm -hmm. uh, if something comes in like I'm, I'm constantly conversations 
um, songs I listen to. Like if a word pops out, um, a word pops out of a conversation, I'll write it down. Um, I have a lot of, I have a lot of song title ideas. And once I get enough of them and I have a, like just create a record, like once I get enough of them and I, I know like I'm creating, like I created a chant record uh, last year and I'm creating a second one. So I just start to get all those song titles and then I'll finally write it out on this like massive board. Mm -hmm. And I'll, my creative partner, Daryl Brown and I work a lot together and we'll set aside time and we'll be like, okay, we're gonna look at that board and just see what jumps out. And, and what's so interesting is something will jump out at me because of an experience I just had and now I have something to write about. Like it's, it's just really about dancing with what's showing up. Um, and yeah, and being open to what I, what I hear um, and what I feel that wants to come through without judgment. I think that's one of the most challenging mm -hmm. things is allowing, allowing for the mess. Like um, on the new record, there was one song that I rewrote probably three or four times and not until I got in the studio and sang this one piece of it did it actually like finalize the song and that's not usually how I write like usually before I go in everything would be completely worked out and I just I had to keep trusting I was like I know it's almost there I know it's almost there and I had to keep trusting the mess of it um, in order to get there so it's for me creation like it, it just doesn't stop it'll tell me what it wants to be birth what wants to be birth yeah. and as long as I continue to allow that I wish I was that great at every single part of my life right <laughs> but and, you know and, but and life would just create uh, in that way I but I'm when it comes to music or when it comes to writing I really do have that dance down of just always remaining open to the mystery of what wants to come through when I get a chance to talk to awesome musicians like yourself I I and I've noticed this with other bands when I read about their really great hits that that come out that some of the best songs they come in the shortest period of time have you noticed yeah. that, that you work on a song for, for a year and then you have a song that comes in in a day and the one that comes in in a day is is the one that is awesome there's something about that that the short quick um bit of flash or is it different in every case I think for me it's different in every case but there's there's definitely bursts of energy um that come in and some sometimes mine come in during my sleep um where i've like i've i had an album called spitfire and i um mm. i woke up and wrote that title down in the middle of the night um and then the next day something happened that really pissed me off we ended up writing that song um about that thing and it ended up being the title of the record so like there's it come they come in at weird times and i've especially my sleep i've there's been times where i've I've woke half woken up and just thought to myself, I'll remember this in the morning and it never happens. Right. So I have, I am 100%. Like if something wakes me up in my sleep, I have to, no matter how tired I am, get up and write it down. Um, I think that's the universe being like, how committed are you really? <laughs> right. um, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's just uh, about being open. And I, I think each, each, situation is very different um but there are there are definitely bursts of energy that come pouring and it's kind of like you know you you have to catch that moment of magic when it comes for me it's like i drop everything and and allow and then go back to whatever i'm doing so it's don't don't put off the creativity <laughs> don't put off the creative energy it when it wants to come it wants to come seize that moment right away yes absolutely so the the process of 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 creating uh, as i notice um and i'm sure that uh, other artists you have uh um and that's the great thing about the chant album is that it's 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 a little bit different you were mm -hmm. you you took a chance you had longer songs some of it's in a different genre and you've done that you've played around with genres in your career um yeah. I, i'm sure that you reach a point where like I want to, I want to add this certain instrument. I want to have this certain style and I don't really care what anybody thinks. And you have to constantly be like, well, people are not going to like this or people are, <laughs> this is not my genre. And I want to, you know, how you've had to face that probably more than a lot of other artists. Like I'm going to be honest and do whatever the heck I want with my music. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm to that place and which is so fun. It's such a great place to get to. Mm -hmm. Um, I, 
you know, it's, it's interesting because for me, starting in, in Nashville and in that world, I, I had a crossover hit with How Do I Live when I was 14 and it was accidental. But in the country world, it was kind of like you were, if you crossed over, they disowned you. And Perfect. so kind of got put on the outskirts of that industry for a while now. And it was such a, um, it was such a blow to my heart. Uh, but at the same time, it's probably the best thing that ever happened to me because it, I didn't get boxed into something. And I have, you know, the lines in the music industry have been very blurred now for many years. Um, but I almost had to stop playing the game. Like I had to step out of the game in order to build a new one. Like mm -hmm. I was, and, and I'm just, I'm just realizing that this is happening by the way, um, because I've, I, I got so frustrated trying to play the game and it was like, well, why am I, then finally one day I was like, why am I trying to put myself into all these boxes um, to fit someone else's view of me? Like if I just allowed myself to run free with my creativity, what would I create? And that's when, that's when I started creating my own game. And it's like, you know, and, and trust me, I've, I've had the, I, I've been so disheartened by it that sometimes I just, sometimes I have wanted to give up. Right. Um, but it's, but it's the, I think, you know, the, the satisfaction for me of creation, I think is really what I've started to lean into of having that conversation with something else greater than me and being able to cultivate that relationship that's so satisfying and then to be able to bring in whatever it's asking me to like this um this new album god's work is like it's so many different styles of music when you hear it you don't be like there is no genre for it and yeah. so i i had to um i had to trust that that's what that's what needed to be birthed and it's i think the chant record it's it, the chant record really started um, to the chant record helped this album take form. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I created the chant record in a time where we were all locked in our houses and in need of like some, some to be uplifted. Mm -hmm. And it just, it felt right at the time. And then creating God's work and now creating the, the second chant record, like it, I just, I'm doing what I'm called to do. Yeah. I think, and when you, I think, and when you're in that alignment, you're just there's so much joy, and the freedom of that expression uh, brings so much joy to me. I think one of my biggest, um, one of my biggest things that I want to cultivate in my life is is that freedom of expression. And spent so many years trying to please other people that yeah, I'm I'm no longer there. It feels so so good. <laughs> it really does. I've heard it, you know, there's a, there's a book I read where they, um, they said, you could put the same painting up between, um, and, and they would I'd look identical, but the one, the, the artist created from his heart, you would know right mm. away which one was better. And that's what I felt like with, with the chant, like this is, this is pure, you could feel the joy with it. It's, it's very subtle, but you, it, it, it comes through, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. I, I, yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, and it's interesting, there's certain songs that have been hits of mine that I don't even, I don't even perform anymore because it was, I did it for someone else. Right. And I remember there was a very specific time in my mid twenties where I started to create records where I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't record a song that was for someone else. And because they thought it was going to work anymore, it was because mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted to sing these songs. I wanted them to be for my heart. And you know, sometimes it takes people a moment to catch up with your heart. <laughs> is yeah, what I've learned, true. you know, and sometimes people, you know, I've learned that the right people that need to hear it will hear it. And sometimes that means massive amounts of people. Sometimes it means a small amount of people. Um, but as long as it's coming from my heart, at least it's in, a, in alignment with who I am. And I think that that's so important. And I think you're right. People do, people do feel it. And yeah. And the more that that is for me, the, the more consistent I've become about that. Um, you know, people, there's integrity to that in my work. And I think people do appreciate that. Absolutely. The song I can't wait to hear is the, the second song on God's work, Ziggy Marley and Ben Harper. And yes. Ben Harper. Oh my gosh, Ben Harper is yes. amazing. Yeah, Ben's great. Um, he played a uh, slide guitar on that song. It's very... Um, once again, one of those things where I never thought I'd be recording a reggae song. And it's, um, right. I, I was doing a podcast interview 
with Danielle Laporte and she said something to the effect of, um, you know, the only way we're going to get there, wherever there was, we were talking about is to hold each other's hands. And I <laughs> went, hold on. <laughs> I just wrote it down. Right. And as soon as we got on the podcast interview, Daryl and I went and started writing the only uh, that song. And we had like two ways we could go with it. Um, one way was kind of this like Beatles esque feel. And the other way was, um, was this reggae vibe and we had, we started playing around with all these different world groups on the record and we went the reggae route and i'm so glad we did ziggy's mm. on it um and Lettucey and ben harper and it all of these it really is about community the song is and so we ended up the community on this record is so cool i just started asking people i was like do you want to come sing on this record i'm so glad everybody had some time at home <laughs> we just kind of sent the sent the record out to people and we're like put your voice on it so um yeah it's a really it's a really fun song i have to send it to you if you can uh, hear it. awesome i can't wait so uh now obviously we can go back and there's a clearly a point maybe, maybe around your, your 30s where something happened spiritually for you and you had a sort of awakening something changed and you obviously became much more interested in in, in your own spiritual journey I'd like to get your story of, of, of how that happened. So, you know, a lot of people can relate because they're going through the same thing right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I, f I feel like I'm at a new level of that spiritual journey, like every day. Every day, um, yeah. <laughs> every, every day is a new day. Um, I went through, um, I guess it was when I was 30, I right after my 30th birthday, I checked myself into treatment center for severe anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I, that was kind of when I started uh, uh, on my own spiritual journey. Um, it started, I, I kind of went, I went through this the other day with someone I was explaining. It started with the head and then it was like the emotional journey and then it was the physical journey. And now it's, it's in my, the journey is in my voice, which is really yeah. interesting. So it kind of went, it went, my journey has been mind, emotion, body, and voice. And, um, and the mind of it all, the um, mental part of it started in my thirties. And then I started breath work. Um, I guess it was maybe a couple of years into, uh, into that, my, my, the mental side of it for me, um, I, I did a breath work class and it just started opening me up to, um, my m emotional body, uh, and all of the complexities of that. And, it also started opening me up to my own soul and um, connecting me with something deeper. And that's really where I, I started this just expansive, I mean, I, I almost have no words for it. Like the experiences mm -hmm. that I've had through breath work have been so otherworldly. Um, and then, yeah, I just started, after that, I just, I started doing more breath work and wanting to learn more about um, about my own soul, I guess, is really what it was like digging into, um, digging into my connection with creation, um, really cultivating that relationship, um, understanding the psyche, understanding the body, um, trauma and understanding my own trauma of my life, um, and how it still exists. A lot of it in my nervous system, um, which is still a daily unravel for me. Um, it's uh yeah i've just been fascinated by the whole experience the the i mean i my my podcast being called holy human is yeah you know that, that is for sure my my fascination with our humanity and then our holiness and how that both of those things are what make us whole um and the more we deny either one of those the you know the the harder life gets so, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been quite the journey. And like I said, every day is different. Um, some days I feel like I'm completely being drug under again. Other days I feel like I'm, you know, on top of the world. I think like everybody. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's been a journey. It still is a journey. Um, will forever be until I'm gone and who knows what happens after that. So, yeah, the, the reason I can relate to you so much and listening to your podcast is that you're an avid reader. And you're, you, 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 when you're talking to many of these authors, you've read these books. And so, you know, do you have some, some favorite books that have really en enlightened you and, and, and inspired you? Um, oh, in, wow. 
that that along this path oh my gosh you're what has you i'm totally gonna blank your book actually 100 percent did oh, your you. meditations have been honestly have been changing my world and my doctor and i literally will every morning we will box each other which ones we're doing oh wow <laughs> yeah it's so fun i'm, I'm still blown um, away by that no i love it it's just they're they're awesome your voice is so hypnotic um hold on let me i'm going to look at see i asked you about music and right. now you're asking me about books and I'm, I'm tr blanking on like what has. Well, it's kind of what happens when there's amazing. so many of them. There's just so many, you know, so there are, there <laughs> are so many books and I have, Oh, you know what really I loved recently um, was, is Martha Beck. I love Martha Beck. The mm -hmm. way of integrity is a fantastic book. Um, she also has one called the joy diet. Um, if you're, if you're real serious about like, I, I told her she was on my podcast recently and I said, your, your work scares the shit out of me because it really does dig into like the core core of mm -hmm. who we are as humans and makes us, she makes me question everything about my life, which I love and hate all at the same time. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't want to see that. Wait, I've been lying to myself about that. And I want to continue to lie to myself about that. Um, but she her i would say her books and her work have been really profound recently um in my evolution so i highly recommend any martha beck work for martha sure. beck. all right yeah. thanks and, yeah. and so, so alongside of that along the way you've you've met some amazing artists along the mm -hmm. way and i'm sure you've learned a lot from them in about creation and how to deal with the world do you have any an artist that you've learned from and it's inspired you that any, any stories that you might share oh um the one that comes to mind always uh and it's just funny um is steven tyler i love steven so much and <laughs> you know i was um i was 15 maybe and <laughs> my girlfriend chrissy and i were like way into aerosmith and what I loved to do back in the day when I was on, I was touring, like I did 500 and something shows in three and a half years in the time wow. I was 13. I know it's insane, oh insane. Um, so, but on my days off, like I would go, I, we would fly somewhere and go see like Aerosmith. And so um, he pulled me backstage one time um, and he's like, he sees me backstage. He had actually come to a show of mine um, and brought his daughter um, in Boston. And so, mm -hmm. and so I had met him before, but I, he knew I was at the show. So he pulled me backstage and like shut everybody out of the room and closed the door. And I'm like, I'm 15. <laughs> Steven Tyler's like dragging me into this room. I'm like, what's happening? Right. Um, but he, he had, he laid down on the couch and um he was like here lay on the, he, he oh he laid me down the couch he was like lay on the couch he laid on the floor and he started talking just to me about life and how he wanted me to you know protect myself and understand the business and um you know that there's not everybody was looking out for my best interest and like mm. he just really it was like dad like wanting to right. lay it down of how this industry is really um it can be very deceiving um, and and hurtful. And it was just, it was so kind. Like he really, he just really wanted to um, to take care of me as, you know, mm -hmm. and whoever, whoever would have thought like, you know, Steven Tyler, this, you know, ma massive rock band, just like he really, really cared. And, you know, it was, I've, I've never, I haven't, because I was so young, I didn't have a lot of people like that in my life as mm -hmm. far as in the industry. And it's amazing, like the angels that kind of did show up for me. Um, and he was one of them, just always like really, really gave a shit about what happened to me. And um, like I said, because I was young, I didn't have a lot of friends and uh, in the industry. And it's interesting because I'm starting to I'm starting to be able to build that now in um, in relationships that I that were so out of they were out of sync because I was so young. Mm -hmm. um so i my relationships now in the industry are um yeah they, they come from a different place and i feel like i'm i'm starting to actually have friends um within <laughs> an industry where i where i felt very lonely yeah um, how, how can you trust anybody they're always yeah, yeah i get that when 
So the, the, beyond your singing and, and creativity, the, the amazing thing uh, is that you're also an actress. Mm -hmm. As we were talking about on your podcast when you interviewed me, I believe it's a superpower. I believe that acting is a superpower that if you if you use this power properly, you can use it to create your reality. And I'm sure, yeah. you know, uh, you, you you started acting, right? Did you take acting classes? What, what, what have you learned in the process of becoming an actress that has helped you as, you know, relating to what we've talked about with reality creation? Right. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, acting, singing is like breathing for me. Acting is something I have to think about and I don't like doing it very often because I'm yeah. like, when I go, when I go into, when I go into create creation mode, I like to be able to like, free myself and music does that for me mm -hmm. um and with acting there's there's so much that goes into creating a character that i i haven't done it very often i haven't felt really really comfortable doing it the interesting thing about finding your work is as soon as i read your book i was like oh this gives me a new way in to creation mm -hmm. um and experiencing the reality in which i want to create like already experiencing that reality through visualization so that mm -hmm. when it actually happens, there, there are like real feelings, there are real emotions that I tap into. Um, and so it was one of the first things that I thought of when I was reading your work is, um, oh, I can use this. I can use this to help me um, also become, well, that for me allows me to become freer in the process of acting because mm -hmm. I think one of the mo biggest challenges for me as an actress, um, because I have been so self-aware, um, it's almost, it's almost been, it's kind of been to my detriment that I, I have been so self-aware of, um, of being Leanne Rhymes in a way, right. um, that I, it's, challenging for me to let myself go into these other places and i think um that i think that that has definitely shifted for me um in fact i'm gonna be doing a movie fairly soon and so i'm excited about the mm -hmm. the, the opportunity to play around with this in a completely different way um because yeah i i definitely see myself um starting to explore acting from a different point of view after after experiencing um the, your visualizations and your work because i think it i think it's gonna be really fun and i'm gonna i'll let you know how it goes <laughs> i can't wait so say, say i want to play the role of being a ceo of a corporation and, right. and, and let's treat it from the the actor's point of view right um mm -hmm. you have to go about studying the role do you go yeah. do you go interview somebody do you read books about it is there is there a, uh, pr a process before yep. so yeah did, let's talk about the if i want to play a role is there a uh -huh. process that you've learned that helps me to play the role? If I want to play the CEO of a company or I want to play the role of an artist, something that I might not be aware of, is there a process that you use to research and kind of go into that role? If it's something that you might not know about at first. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I feel like you definitely just start digging. Um, mm -hmm. That's what Google's for, right? We get to, right. we get to play around. <laughs> and I think then you, you know, we, we provide ourselves with as much information as possible um about that that character and then we also get to create you know we get to create backstory of that character and why why you know within within the script there's only so much story so then we get to write our own and we get to make choices as the performer of why this character is making the choices that they're making mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of um there's a lot of complexities and if, if people want to dig in and go that deep of like yeah. okay how do i you know, and as I think of, of your work, it's like, what are, you know, write, writing that backstory and then going into meditation and actually living out that those feelings of that story only gives a new level to how real I am, I'm able to, to bring that emotion within the moment. Um, that's what excites me is because mm -hmm. for, you know, with, with music, it's the, the emotion that comes through me is just always so accessible it's just right there um and with with acting i think i've been looking for a way into that and it's interesting because I, I had this experience with my writing voice too um i remember my friend daryl we were writing one day in my early 20s and he was like if you can write from the same place that you sing from like you'll 
it'll be incredible. Um, and so that always stuck with me. And I think I'm going through the same process with acting now mm -hmm. as um, I'm starting to find that place where I can, I can create as an actress from the same space that I write and sing from. And I think that um, this allows me to be able to, to feel those feelings um, so that I can bring that honesty to what I'm doing. So yeah, it, it really is. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of backstory yeah. and a lot of, of research that goes into, and I also, it's, it's great to like, if you're playing a, um, you know, if you're playing CEO or if you're playing a rock star, like it's fun to go and almost take on to, to watch, um, watch certain people or get into people's, you know, minds and their experience and kind of take pieces of them on. I know I do that with music too. Yeah. Um, I mean, none of us are, none of us are our own originals. Um, we all have been influenced from a million different places. And then you kind of take certain influence from different artists and create your own. Um, but that, I've definitely done that with singers. Like there's definitely pieces of different musicians that I've taken from them to create what you hear um so yeah it's fun to, to kind of take little pieces of different people here and there and then create the character it's fascinating so much you have so many tools in your toolbox having gone through <laughs> what seemingly was struggles in your past um the the, the question i want to ask is how how do you say no you're at a point where you mm -hmm. have a lot of people that, that want access to you they want to talk to you they you know um, you've had to learn this incredible lesson um, mm -hmm. something I'm still trying to, to learn. Mm -hmm. How do you learn to say no when, when there's a part of you that always wants to say, okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have learned to say no, to protect my innocence, um, mm -hmm. to protect that piece of me that's coming back online. Um, it's super important. Like that boundary of, of no is, um, is important. And sometimes my no, like a lot of people's comes along with a great explanation of why when no is a full sentence and we right. all know that, but, <laughs> but at the same time, we're, a lot of us are recovering people pleasers. And it is, I, I still go through like, you know, I'll stop to sign. I stopped to sign for people the other night in Nashville. And then I, I would have stood so there, I could have signed forever. And then I eventually had to go. And it was, I have this like deep guilt. I, I do. Right. I have this deep guilt of like, oh, just, you know, I feel so bad. But at the same time, like there's only so much of myself I can give. And I've, I have depleted. I've, I've, I've done that life. I've depleted myself enough for everybody else um, and, and had nothing of myself left over. And mm -hmm. so I think for me, no is to protect it. There's a protection piece in there for my, my innocence. And, um, I also know when to say no and it just doesn't feel good. Like when things just don't align and mm -hmm. um, I know that's kind of a key like buzzword in, in our field of like, oh, if it's an alignment, but <laughs> I'm starting to understand that it's more, there's truth, there's real truth to that. Like, it does it feel good? Is it gonna excite me as much as it's gonna excite someone else? Like, am I, am I gonna feel nourished and um, good after I do something instead of fully depleted. And look, there's things, there's certain things that I do that I still, I say yes. And I know that I could be depleted from that. And I've learned ways to come back home and replenish myself. And yeah. I think um, that's been a key piece for me is like just getting really clear on why I'm saying yes. And then knowing how to nourish myself back into fullness. And yeah. And when you, I think, it, there has to be something reciprocal in the energetic exchange that, you mm -hmm. know, does it, does it excite you? What is, and getting clear on what you're saying yes for, um, is it because if it's a, a, is it a financial gain? Is it, is it going to light you up? You know, is it going to creatively fulfill you? Like for me getting really clear on the why, um, I'm doing something is always really helpful and also getting because of that I it's easier for me to say no because I'm like mm, no that just doesn't that's not going to light me up so you've had a lot of experience in dealing with large groups we kind of talked about it a little bit on our interview and so um you have times when you feel like a, a negative energy you, you I'm sure that you've created some defense mechanisms that others can maybe use to like, if, if, if I feel like I'm in a, it's in a negative big group of people, it just doesn't feel right. 
do you have ways of kind of blocking that energy or is how do you deal when you're dealing with large groups of people you're singing with thousands of people <laughs> yeah. you know how do you how do you deal with it i'm sure that you've come up with some is it is it subconscious or do you do actively stuff to to kind of qualify your energies does that make sense uh yeah no I, there's been times where i do um i like to play around with more so than protecting myself because there seems i know there are ways to protect yourself and still be able to um for that for the good to, to to seep in but for some reason for me when i think of protection i guess maybe because of how i've protected myself it's always been like walled up and nothing gets in and nothing gets out right. <laughs> and and that's been when i think of that energetically that's what comes up for me i think there is a i've been playing around recently with sending like energy to where i'm going um and setting mm -hmm. an intention for which i really love like i love intention setting um there's something really powerful about that and setting up the energy in which i want the people to experience um I'll do that ahead of a show, which I really love doing. And I, I can tell a huge difference in the way that people receive me. Um, mm -hmm. And it's also because I've already set my own intention of the way I want to give. Um, and it definitely shifts things. Uh, I find that that's more productive for me than, than the protection piece of it. Um, if, if, I, if an audience is giving me something different than what I expected, um, I'm not received as well as I, mm -hmm. I feel like I would have liked to have been. I feel like I've, I've stopped making that about myself. I think that's one of the things that we can easily go into. And that's actually what I feel can continue to, uh, for that energy to be able to reverberate throughout our life is that all of a sudden we get caught in the story of it's my fault. I did something wrong. And then therefore we're now attached to that energy. That's how I view it. Yeah. Um, instead of oh like we just didn't vibe or you know they they were having an off night or maybe or even i was having an off night and we just didn't connect somehow um but it doesn't it doesn't always have to be about like there can be grace there there had this i think when we get locked into that energy it becomes um because we've somehow created a story around that that we now don't we don't move out of that story it now comes with us right Tell me a song that people would be shocked that you totally love. Oh, oh my God. I don't know. I don't know. In, any shocked? genres, like genres that, wow, Leanne Rhymes listens to that. I mean, I love, I mean, I love, there's some great rap. Like I'm love, I love Eminem. Um, uh -huh. I love any old school, like Biggie and Tupac. Like those are my jam. Eddie, Eddie and I were, in mammoth the other day before the super bowl like big performance mm -hmm. and um we were we have an rv so we were we were a sight to behold we were in our sweats um out by this like little campfire we had set out by the rv like having a beer and jamming out to like all this great old rap and <laughs> in the middle of a parking lot in the middle of mammoth it was awesome um but yeah i i love all kinds of music i really do um you were I, I you you were joke I don't know if you were joking about asking me about my top five because I I'm gonna them. ask okay I okay, promise okay, you I have I'm them. Gonna, I, all right so so the, yeah the, the my favorite question you asked me because it, it it just awakened my mind and made me remember songs you know I still mm -hmm. don't you know I, I've already changed it up right <laughs> and you ask your all of your guests and, and and you have some amazing answers what is your top five favorite songs that's probably let's just let's proceed this you're not insulting anybody by not including them in it you know you know so many music right. You're just picking five that come up right now, right? So give me your yes. five favorite songs. Well, the five that came up for me, which are really, some of them would always be on my list and there's other ones that are fairly new. Right. So um, yeah, they're Secret Garden um, by Bruce Springsteen. It was, Love that. it's probably, uh-oh, are we frozen again? I can hear you. Ah, hold on. Oh. Yeah. So top five. Okay. So top five. So as of this moment, the secret garden by Bruce Springsteen that I've always said would be um, my, I think it's my theme song, which is really sad. <laughs> it's less and less my theme song. Cause if there's a secret garden, she hides less and less my theme song as on my journey, I'm unveiling 
that garden with inside. Um, I Can't Make You Love Me by Bonnie Raitt, which is just like one of the most- Classic. So good. And mm -hmm. there's so many versions of that song. Prince did a version of that mm -hmm. song. It's awesome. Um, love that song. Um, Most of the Time by Bob Dylan. Such a well-written song. Yeah. Um, the lyrics. Kills me. I I actually, if you notice, I really like sad songs. There's something about it that just like touches <laughs> my heart. Um, the lyrics of that song are so good. Um, there's a song, Bon Iver did a song for a film called Heavenly Father. And um, I don't think you can actually, people have covered it, but I don't think his version is available like on Spotify or anything like that. You, But if you go to YouTube and look mm -hmm. up Bon Iver, Heavenly Father, um, okay. There's a version of him at the uh, symphony, I think it was the symphony hall in Sydney. And it is amazing. It's a, him and a, a bunch of people standing around a mic and it's all acapella and it's all like hand claps and like voices. So good. Such a good song. And then Florence and the Machine just came out with a song called Free. That makes I, me so freaking happy. I just love Florence and the Machine. They're just amazing. Her, I do too. Oh my gosh. She's incredible and i'm actually going to see her um in like two days here i don't I'm ever so go to see a concert and <laughs> i'm like i'm so excited so free by florence the machine it's my new jam and it makes me just really really happy wow that, that that's amazing so thank you so much for taking the yeah. time and talking with me and i've learned so much it's been a real honor everybody needs to check out the holy human podcast and the god's work comes out thank on you. september 16th so yeah. make sure you can pre-order that album now. Check out the Chant album. It's amazing. So many other albums. They're, they're, they're so good. <laughs> you know, uh, thank, you. thank you so much for blessing us with your music. And I'm sorry for all uh, for us having to watch all the struggles that you've been through. But we all, we all, I can speak for the world that we all love you and thank you for what thank you've you. done. I appreciate it immensely. And welcome thank to the you. Reality Revolution, Leanne. Yes. Oh my God. And I say that every morning to everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the reality. I am, I am genuinely honored by that for sure. Thank you. Thank you. We return you now to your local announcement.